What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled as always by the incredible folks at Nerd Teas, and we are enjoying some iced watermelon oolong iced tea today from Nerd Teas. And you know what? Coronavirus be damned. We're going to talk about some sports, and basically the only thing in sports that is at least saying now that it's going to be going on on schedule, aside from WrestleMania, but that's a whole different story. The 2020 NFL Draft. We're less than a month away at this point from the entry draft for the National Football League, and I thought, what the heck, why not do a mock draft? So obviously, you know how mock drafts go. We got picks 1 through 32 of the first round of the NFL draft. However, I have incorporated some trades into the mix that I think are logical, could potentially happen, could potentially work out. You know, we'll keep an eye on those and some teams obviously shuffling where they're going to be picking in the first round. With no further ado, let's start right at the top, the first overall pick, which belongs to the Cincinnati Bengals. There is very little shock about how the first pick is going to go. With the first overall pick, the Cincinnati Bengals will select Joe Burrow. He is an Ohio boy, quarterback from LSU, was a red shirt senior. But there's a great argument to be made that Chase Young, the really talented edge rusher, is the best prospect in this draft. I just don't think Cincinnati has the nuts to trade down with the first overall pick. This also doesn't preclude the possibility that maybe they even turn around and trade out Andy Dalton and Joe Burrow is starting from the jump in the 2020 season. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. It just doesn't preclude the possibility that maybe it might. Joe Burrow, first overall, goes to Cincinnati. The second overall pick is held by the Washington Redskins, except it is no longer. Ding, 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 ding. Trade to announce. The Washington Redskins trade the number two overall pick to the Miami Dolphins. Miami sending back picks number five as well as number 18. So two first round picks in order for Miami to jump up to the number two spot in the draft in order to take quarterback Tua Tagovailoa, and I know I pronounced his name wrong, quarterback from Alabama. And look, he may not play this year, but he'll have an awesome opportunity to play behind Ryan Fitzpatrick, learn from Ryan Fitzpatrick. And this is 100% based on that workout video. There's gonna be people saying, why would you make that trade? Tua's probably still gonna be available at five. After that workout video of Tua's came out, I think that all but guarantees that the Dolphins can be talked into making this trade on the risk that the Redskins may look at that and go, you know what, we like Dwayne Haskins and we got Alex Smith, but man, that workout video looked great. Who's to say the Redskins wouldn't jump up and grab Tua number two overall? The Dolphins can absolutely, with the draft equity that they have in the first round, be talked into making this deal. I think it could happen. Dolphins trade up and take Tua number two overall. The number three pick belongs to the Detroit Lions, and this is like magic just falling into their lap. The Detroit Lions, with the third overall pick, take Chase Young, edge rusher, like I said, could potentially be the most talented guy in the draft, Chase Young playing out of Ohio State, and look... I think this is a steal. This is an absolute steal for the Lions if it happens this way. Detroit had the third fewest sacks and ranked in the bottom 12 in terms of total run defense last season in 2019. They had better hope Matt Stafford can still go. Hopefully Stafford can still play some football because there is always the conversation of, geez, should they take a quarterback in this spot? Somebody that might be able to step in and play next season. But if they're not going to get Burrow and they're not going to get Tua... I don't know that that quarterback exists in this draft. That's a steal at number three. Chase Young, number three overall to the Lions. The New York Giants hold the number four overall pick, and with that pick, I have them selecting offensive lineman Mekhi Becton. Mekhi Becton out of Louisville at the fourth overall spot. They've now made the decision that Daniel Jones is their guy at quarterback. He's the guy, but now you have to protect him. The Giants allowed 43 quarterback sacks, as well as the third most quarterback hits in the entire NFL in 2019 they allowed 119 plus you know 
you got that guy named Saquon Barkley, might be a smart idea to throw some blockers out there in front of him and see maybe what he can do with the football. Mekhi Becton on the offensive line, he goes number four to the New York Giants, and I think that's a solid pick for them. You've got the Washington Redskins now up at number five after that trade with the Miami Dolphins. With the fifth overall pick, I've got Washington selecting linebacker Isaiah Simmons. And there's a lot of people that are saying Simmons should be a slam dunk top three pick, a redshirt junior out of Clemson. But look, you make that move if you're the Redskins, you make that trade. This was the second worst total run defense in 2019. They got slashed for 146 yards a game on the ground last year. That indicates that front seven is not good enough, despite the fact that they had a secondary that could make some plays against the pass. You've got to be able to stop the run. Isaiah Simmons could very well step in in 2020, play some really significant minutes, really significant snaps on the defensive side. That's a solid pick for the Redskins. Isaiah Simmons goes number five to Washington after the trade. Up next at number six, you've got the Los Angeles Chargers. And obviously with the departing of Phillip Rivers, there is that hole to fill at the quarterback position. I will say this, I full well think that the Los Angeles Chargers are going to sign Cam Newton. I really do. I think Cam Newton will be their starting quarterback at the beginning of the season. I know they've got Tyrod Taylor, but Tyrod Taylor is a backup quarterback. That's nothing against him. I think Tyrod Taylor even knows that Tyrod Taylor is a backup quarterback. They said they're comfortable with him. I don't think that's true. I do think they signed Cam Newton. But at the same time, signing Cam Newton does not solidify the quarterback position for the long term with the sixth overall pick the los angeles chargers will select quarterback justin herbert and justin herbert comes out of oregon as a senior i think he's the right pick for them they have added all over the place the chargers have in free agency again i think they're still going to sign cam newton but the future at the position gets solidified by drafting justin herbert number six overall Herbert of the Chargers. The number seven overall pick belongs to the Carolina Panthers. Speaking of Cam Newton, the team that just let him go, I think way too much will be asked from new free agent ad Teddy Bridgewater at the quarterback position without more protection in front of him. That's why I think the Panthers go offensive lineman. With the number seven overall pick, I've got the Panthers selecting Jedrick Wills Jr. So Jedrick Wills Jr. comes out of Alabama as a junior on the offensive line. Look, the Panthers gave up 58 quarterback sacks and 102 quarterback hits in 2019. They have plenty of weapons on the offensive side. All Teddy Bridgewater needs is the time to use those weapons. I think that's going to help by picking up Jedrick Wills. Seventh overall, Wills goes to Carolina. The Arizona Cardinals are up next with the 8th overall pick, and 8th overall, I have them selecting Jeff Okuda in the secondary, defensive back from Ohio State, and quite frankly, this defense sucks. There's no other way to put it. This is a bad defense across the board. Okuda probably starts across from Patrick Peterson in the secondary right from opening night this coming season. I think he is a definite boon to the Cardinals on the defensive side of the football. They need all the help they can get. Okuda, eighth overall, a solid value pickup as far as I'm concerned because I think Okuda is a top five talent, but I've got him falling to the Cardinals at eight. The Jacksonville Jags are up next at pick number nine, and with the ninth overall pick, I have them selecting Tristan Wirfs on the offensive line, junior from Iowa. And look, their offensive line was decent last season. It wasn't bad, but they're thin at the tackle position in terms of high-quality talent. Aside from Jawan Taylor, who was a second-round pick last year, they're thin at the tackle position. I think if they give Gardner Minshew more time with the football, he'll make more of that Minshew magic. I'm a big believer in Gardner Minshew. I think he's going to do good things this season, but they're going to need time to protect him. Tristan Wirfs will give them a little more of that time at the offensive tackle position. Wirfs goes to Jacksonville, ninth overall. In the 10 spot, we had the Cleveland Browns. However, ding, 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 we have our second trade to announce. The Cleveland Browns send the 10th overall pick to 
the Washington Redskins, the second pick that the Redskins have been involved in trading for. They send offensive tackle Trent Williams to the Cleveland Browns. Trent Williams wants out of town. Everybody knows that. He's arguably one of the top three, probably, offensive linemen in the entire NFL. It, it probably won't be William, like Trent by himself. It'll probably be another draft pick attached after him, a fourth rounder, third rounder maybe, maybe one of those you know compensatory picks. Who knows? But the meat of the trade is Trent Williams goes to Cleveland, Cleveland sends back the 10th overall pick. So now for the second time in six picks, the Washington Redskins are back on the clock. With the 10th overall pick, I've got the Washington Redskins grabbing an offensive weapon. I've got them grabbing wide receiver C.D. Lamb. Now, C.D. Lamb is a junior from Oklahoma. Look, they've got Terry McLaurin, who is a good weapon for them offensively. They got an okay pass rush. So we're going on the offensive side here. A nice young compliment to help out either Dwayne Haskins or Alex Smith, whoever happens to be under center for the Redskins this season. C.D. Lamb could put up some numbers in his first season. I like him going 10th overall, and I got him going to Washington because I think they're trading Williams out of town. The number 11 overall pick belongs to the New York Jets, and I have them drafting at a position where they have a little bit of a talent drain, not a brain drain, but a talent drain. I have them drafting defensive lineman Derek Brown, just because the Auburn senior will definitely help to improve a position group that does not have anyone drafted within the first three rounds aside from Quinn and Williams. None of their D linemen are, you know, first three round picks other than Williams. The Jets only ranked number 22 in sacks in 2019, despite having the number two total run defense in the entire NFL last year. So they got to improve that pass rush. They will do it by drafting Derek Brown 11th overall. The number 12 pick in the draft did belong to the now Las Vegas Raiders. However, ding, 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 here's trade number three. The Denver Broncos acquire the number 12 overall pick from the Las Vegas Raiders, sending back picks number 15 and 77. So we got number 12 to Denver, number 15 and number 77 to Las Vegas, try to get some more young talent on that Raiders roster. We got the Denver Broncos now on the clock at number 12, and I have them drafting their biggest positional need, which is at wide receiver. They are drafting Alabama junior Jerry Judy. Now, they're in bad need of weapons here on the offensive side. Drew Locke needs somebody to throw the football to. The Broncos cannot afford to wait. As far as I'm concerned, they can't afford to wait with their position in the draft to see if those elite wide receivers get taken ahead of time. They don't want to be in a position where they're stuck either having a draft like a Justin Jefferson or a T. Higgins. Nothing wrong with those players, but they're, they, they would be reaches at that point in the draft. So they're going to take the chance. They're going to jump up. They're going to parlay a pair of picks into an elite wide receiver prospect. That is what they do. Denver trades up to 12 and drafts Jerry Judy. A lucky number 13, we have the San Francisco 49ers by virtue of a trade with the Indianapolis Colts where they sent DeForest Buckner to Indianapolis. So we got the 49ers on the clock and I think they made this trade for a very specific reason. I think they did exactly what I said the Broncos are going to do, which is they traded up in position to get one of those big fish wide receiver prospects. They're going to be able to do that from this position by drafting Henry Ruggs III, the junior from Alabama. Henry Ruggs III is now a proud member of the 49ers. Again, they very clearly made this trade in order to get one of those big fish wide receivers in order to try to replace what was being output by Emmanuel Sanders. Lamb and Judy off the board. Ruggs is the natural choice here. Henry Ruggs goes to San Francisco. 
The Tampa Bay Bucks are now on the clock with the 14th overall pick, and this is probably going to be the most interesting offense to watch this year. But 14th overall, I've got the Tampa Bay Bucks drafting offensive lineman Andrew Thomas, Jr. out of Georgia. And they're going to be the most interesting offense because I have no idea how a Bruce Arian run Tom Brady led offense is going to look because they seem like polar opposites in terms of how they play the game. The only thing that I do know is they're going to need better protection in order for that offense to flourish. They allowed the 11th most sacks and the 6th most quarterback hits on Jameis Winston in 2019. Might explain a couple of those Winston interceptions. They need better protection in order for that to work. They're going to get that by drafting Andrew Thomas, number 14 overall, Andrew Thomas to the Bucks. Now, after that trade with the Broncos, we've got the Las Vegas Raiders on the clock at 15th overall. As far as I'm concerned, the Raiders can afford to have this trade down and still have their pick from their biggest needs, which is either help in their secondary or help with their pass rush. We're going to start with the pass rush. And at number 15 overall, I've got the Raiders drafting defensive lineman Javon uh, Kinlaw. Oh my gosh, sorry, I lost my voice there. Javon Kinlaw. Kinlaw from South Carolina. He is a senior. He is on the defensive line. Look, they had the, what, the eighth fewest sacks in the NFL last year. They need help in multiple positions. That's why they can afford to trade down here, not reach for the player they want. It's a win-win for the Raiders. Javon Kinlaw goes to Las Vegas 15th overall. We meet in the middle now with the number 16 overall pick, which belongs to the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are in prime position here to also address their biggest defensive deficiency, which is an absolutely anemic pass rush. They had just 28 quarterback sacks in 2019. That was the fourth worst across the entire NFL. I've got the Atlanta Falcons drafting. Clavon Chason, edge rusher junior from LSU. This has to be considered a pretty darn good value pick for the Falcons. A lot of people looking at him like a top 10 talent. I think for Atlanta to get him at 16, that's a pretty solid get for them. Clavon Chason goes to the Atlanta Falcons, 16th overall. The number 17 pick did belong to the Dallas Cowboys. However, ding, 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 trade city all over the place. The Dallas Cowboys send the number 17 overall pick to the Green Bay Packers. Packers trade up from 30 to 17. This is the most significant trade that I have happening in the first round. Green Bay sends picks number 30, 62, and 136 to the Dallas Cowboys to move up from 30 to 17. The Packers on the clock at number 17 select quarterback Jordan Love. And it is finally time to grab the heir apparent to Aaron Rodgers. Jordan Love, quarterback from Utah State. A lot of people are talking about him potentially being the best raw quarterback prospect in this entire draft. Potentially better than Tua, potentially better than Joe Burrow, potentially better than Justin Herbert. Not saying he will be, but there is that possibility that does exist. I don't think the Packers can allow, again, they can't risk the Redskins jumping up and grabbing the quarterback, which the Redskins would be picking next here at 18 by virtue of that trade from earlier. I don't think the Packers can afford to let that happen. They bundle some draft picks, send them off to the Cowboys. Green Bay comes up to 17. Green Bay selects Jordan Love 17th overall. As I mentioned, Washington Redskins now on the clock at number 18 overall, of course, by virtue of that trade with the Dolphins. The Dolphins acquiring this pick from the Steelers from Minka Fitzpatrick. At 18th overall, I have the Washington Redskins drafting C.J. Henderson, a member of the secondary, a defensive back. Florida, Florida Gators, a junior cornerback defensive back. Washington, look, with these picks, Washington has addressed multiple, multiple issues on their football team already. Some people look at C.J. Henderson like he's a top 15 talent, maybe even a top 10 talent. I think he certainly plays meaningful snaps in the Redskins secondary in 2020. C.J. Henderson, 18th overall to Washington. 
The Las Vegas Raiders are now back on the clock at number 19. This was the pick they originally acquired from the Chicago Bears in the Khalil Mack trade. And at number 19 overall, the Las Vegas Raiders select defensive back Christian Fulton. So we've got back-to-back defensive backs that have gone in this draft. He's a senior out of LSU, and look, the Raiders still need to address that secondary. They can easily do that with this pick. It's another area of weakness that they've addressed in this draft. I think it's smart drafting by the Vegas Raiders to go a couple spots on the defensive side. Christian Fulton at defensive back goes 19th overall to Vegas. The Jacksonville Jags are back on the clock now at number 20, and after addressing the offensive line in their previous pick inside the top 10, they're now going to turn to the defensive side of the ball. Number 20 overall, I've got the Jags taking Kenneth Murray. He is a linebacker, Kenneth Murray, a junior out of Oklahoma. And look, this was a bad run defense last year. They were the fifth worst run defense in the entire NFL Yes, Gardner Minshew could use another weapon on the offensive side, but look, we're going to solve one problem at a time here. Jacksonville is going to use this pick that they originally acquired from the Los Angeles Rams. That was in the Jalen Ramsey trade. They're going to use this pick to address the front seven. Kenneth Murray at linebacker goes to Jacksonville at 20. The number 21 pick belongs to the Philadelphia Eagles, or at least it used to. Ding, 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 ding. We have a trade to announce between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots. My, how times have changed. The Patriots trade up two spots from the number 23 spot to number 21. So number 21 goes to the Patriots. Number 23, as well as pick number 125, goes to the Philadelphia Eagles. Patriots have jumped up a couple of spots after the selection of Kenneth Murray because it's from the same position group that they need to address considering the seismic free agency losses that they have taken at the linebacker position. The Patriots draft linebacker Patrick Queen to try to replace what they lost from Kyle Van Noy and Jamie Collins. Patrick Queen, a junior at the linebacker position out of LSU, Again, gaping holes in the middle of their defense with those two that left their team. This is the last great linebacker prospect on the board. The Patriots are going to trade up in order to grab him. They do that. Patrick Queen goes number 21 overall to New England. The Minnesota Vikings own pick number 22 in the draft. This was the pick that they acquired from the Buffalo Bills in the trade for Stephon Diggs. And with the 22nd overall pick, the Minnesota Vikings are going to select defensive back Xavier McKinney. Now, he is a safety specifically. We'll call him a D-back, but he is a safety. A junior from Alabama. And this is a position group for the Vikings that are very, very thin at the safety position. No really clear established backups in the middle of that secondary. So even though the pass offense struggled last year and will struggle a little bit more this year without, uh, you know, Stefan Diggs and the run defense weren't exactly great in 2019. This is a depth pick. It's a smart pick. I think McKinney's talent is much better than where you're going to be getting him. So Xavier McKinney can step in, be a backup on this defense, play meaningful snaps. McKinney goes 22 to the Vikings. The Philadelphia Eagles are now on the clock at number 23 after that trade with the New England Patriots, which had them move down a couple of spots. And with the 23rd overall pick, the Philadelphia Eagles will select wide receiver Justin Jefferson. Jefferson is a junior out of LSU, and this is 100% about optimizing Carson Wentz. The way you optimize Carson Wentz, assuming he's healthy, is by giving him as many weapons as humanly possible. He has a prime opportunity to play meaningful snaps and produce numbers right out of the gate in year one with the Eagles. Justin Jefferson goes number 23 to Philadelphia. The New Orleans Saints are on the clock now with pick number 24, fresh off of adding Emmanuel Sanders to their wide receiver group. So we are certainly not going to look on the offensive side of the ball here. At number 24, I have the Saints selecting Grant Delpit 
as a defensive back. He is a safety. Delpit is a junior out of LSU. Now, this is an overloaded position group for the Saints. They already have 13 defensive backs on the roster but this is a talent thing and the past defense left a little something to be desired in 2019 so they want to continue to build on a position of strength i think it's the right call here from a talent perspective as well as a positional and situational perspective unless they're going to trade down which i don't really see them doing i've got delpit going to the saints at number 24 the Minnesota Vikings are back on the clock now for the second time in four picks. No, they are not. In fact, ding, 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 ding. We have a trade to announce. The Baltimore Ravens trade up from the number 28 spot in the draft. They go from 28 to 25. Minnesota acquires the number 28 pick as well as pick number 106, which is a compensatory pick in, I believe, right at the tail end of the third round. Minnesota adds those two assets in order to drop down three spots. Baltimore comes up to 25. With the 25th overall pick, the Baltimore Ravens, I have them addressing their pass rush, going with an edge rusher. This is Yator Gross Matos, and I know I've pronounced his name wrong. I'm not even going to try to fix it. Gross Matos, as I like to call him, a junior edge rusher from Penn State. This is a big time talent here. A pretty good defense in 2019 were the Baltimore Ravens, but you know, their pass rush was, you know, a little lacking. They only had 37 sacks. That was only good for 21st in the NFL. So if there is something to address on the defensive side, that's what I think it is. I think it's the pressure. And I think this complements the addition of Calais Campbell on the defensive line as an edge rusher from the other side. I think if you have those two coming in, Baltimore's going to find success on that D-line. Gross Matos goes number 25 to the Baltimore Ravens. After the trade that saw them go all in for Tua with the number two overall pick, the Miami Dolphins are back on the clock here at pick number 26. This is the pick they acquired from the Houston Texans in exchange for Kenny Stills and Laramie Tunzel. So a couple of offensive pieces go out the door here. Why not bring an offensive piece back in? I have the Miami Dolphins at number 26, drafting wide receiver T. Higgins. T. Higgins is a junior out of Clemson. And look, you went all in on Tua. They've attacked the defensive problems in free agency. Why don't we reach just a little bit and give Tua a shiny new toy to grow and develop with? That's what you can do. You got Tua to T. It just makes too much sense. T. Higgins goes number 26 overall. He's a new Miami Dolphin. The Seattle Seahawks now on the clock at number 27. No, they are not. Ding, 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 ding. Our final trade of the first round sees the Seattle Seahawks trade the number 27 overall pick to the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland trades back into the first round by shipping picks number 41 and 74 to the Seattle Seahawks. So once again, 27 for 41 and 74. Cleveland trades back into the first round. Now, this run defense sucked in 2019. It would be nice to give Baker Mayfield another weapon on the offensive side, but that's not the way we're going to go with this. Number 27 overall, I have the Cleveland Browns drafting edge rusher A.J. Epinesa. Epinesa is a junior from Iowa. Stopping the run with pressure, I think, is far more important for the long-term success of the Cleveland Browns. And I don't know that they've got anybody on that defensive line that's going to be very good at it. A.J. Epinesa, I think, steps in, plays meaningful snaps right from the beginning of 2020 for the Cleveland Browns. I've got Cleveland trading back into the first round, taking A.J. Epinesa, number 27 overall. With the 28th overall pick, this was the Baltimore Ravens pick, but this is now the Minnesota Vikings by virtue of the Ravens trading up for number 25. And look, it's never a bad move to trade down and still get the player that you want. You traded down a couple of spots and you didn't even have to reach for the guy that ultimately I think you're going to take anyway. At number 28, the Minnesota Vikings selecting wide receiver LaVisca Cheneau Jr., now, Chano Jr. is a junior from Colorado, and look, they need a weapon. They need a weapon to replace what Stefan Diggs brought in, and look, this Chano's not going to replace 
all of Diggs' numbers. But again, they made the right move, trading down. They still get the position and the player that they want. This is the Vikings wide receiver three heading into 2020. Make no mistake about it. They've got still got Adam Thielen. That's great. They've got Tajay Sharp, who can probably act as the number two receiver in that offense. Behind them, it's a bunch of nobodies. So you need to grab your wide receiver three for this coming season. That's what LaVisca Cheneau is. Minnesota grabs Cheneau at number 28. And let me clarify here because, look, T. Higgins went just before Minnesota. I think Minnesota wants Chano Jr. I think they would take Chano Jr. over T. Higgins. That's why trading down was no risk. The number 29 overall pick belongs to the Tennessee Titans, and we're going to go back-to-back wide receivers on this team. Now, look, the Titans are a team that has many needs, as far as I'm concerned, looking at their depth chart all basically overshadowed by the nuclear weapon they have at running back in Derrick Henry. But we're going to stay on the offensive side of the ball with the 29th overall pick. I have the Tennessee Titans selecting Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk is a senior from Arizona State. And look, a lot of needs again on the Titans team. They have a good wide receiver core, but I think Ayuk is arguably the best available player still on the board. So for a team that's got a lot of needs, let's grab the best available player. That's what I think they do here. Titans take wide receiver Brandon Ayuk, 29th overall. Now we finally get to the Dallas Cowboys. This is a position that I think the Cowboys would have hoped to have been in naturally from, you know, success in the season, picking 30th overall. Unfortunately not, but at least they get there via trade. So this is, of course, the pick that they acquired from the Green Bay Packers when the Packers traded up to number 17. At number 30, Dallas selects defensive back Trayvon Diggs. Diggs is a senior cornerback from Alabama, and I don't personally think the Cowboys present real glaring needs as a team from top to bottom, but talented depth is never a waste to have in your organization, especially in the secondary against some of those elite quarterbacks in the NFC. You need really good secondary protection. I think Trevon Diggs or Trayvon Diggs, I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce his name, but I do think he provides that in the secondary, Trevon Diggs, number 30 to the Dallas Cowboys. Number 31 overall, we have the San Francisco 49ers, their second pick here in the first round. They already took a wide receiver to replace the outgoing Emmanuel Sanders. Now we're going to look on the defensive side of the ball. Number 31 overall, the San Francisco 49ers select defensive lineman Neville Gallimore. Canadian! Neville Gallimore is a redshirt senior from Oklahoma. And look, I think if you just take that kind of blue chip interior defensive line player and you line him up beside Tariq Armstead, Thomas, and Bosa, that front line becomes even more undeniable than it already was. I think Gallimore could potentially play a lot of snaps in his first season. I think this is a solid talent-based pick for the 49ers. Gallimore goes 31st overall to San Fran. And the final pick of the first round in this mock draft goes to the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. I have them selecting wide receiver Denzel Mims. Mims is a senior from the Baylor Bears. And you may be wondering, why do you have this prolific offense selecting another wide receiver? I'll tell you why. He had the fifth fastest 40-yard dash time at the Combine of all players. Top five. I think he was number two or number three among wide receivers. One went ahead of him already in this mock, and the other one I think is probably a fourth or fifth round talent. So they're in the spot where they can grab this super speedy wide receiver. Why not double down on your biggest area of strength and continue to give Patrick Mahomes as many possible weapons as you possibly can? That's why I've got the Chiefs grabbing Denzel Mims, the last pick of the first round, number 32 overall. Folks, for a marketplace that is starved for something to talk about sports-wise, that is my 2020 first round NFL mock draft. What did you like? What did you hate? Where did you think I'm right on the money? And where do you think I'm totally out of my mind? Let me know all of these things in the comments section below. Thank you so much for listening. That is it for me, Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, also Bridgewater's Finest on TikTok if you want to throw me a follow on TikTok, fueled as always by the incredible folks 
at Nerd Tease. And next week, I'll be back with another piece of sports-based content to try to pass the time until we can get some of these games back on the field slash rink slash diamond slash pitch slash wherever you want to play. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.